Hello, this is Neil Hansen, and I am taking you through an endograft protocol CT angiogram. So our endograft protocol is slightly different than your routine arterial phase study, and you should protocol a study for this whenever there's been a prior endovascular repair of an aortic aneurysm. The first part of the protocol obtained is a CT scan without contrast, so I have that scan here. As we scroll through here, you can tell that this person has undergone an aortobiliac endograft repair. You can see the high attenuation graft here within the aortic lumen. And the purpose of the non-contrast is twofold. One, uh, you can see the aortic endograft and its components, which occasionally will break or be malaligned, to better advantage without the interfering high attenuation contrast. So I always go through and look at the graft itself. And then two, frequently intraluminally in the excluded part of the aneurysm sac, there will be calcified thrombus. So here's an example of calcified thrombus. When we look at our post-contrast study, if we didn't have this pre-contrast map, you could easily mistake that for a contrast blush and an endoleak. So that's why this essentially serves, serves as a calcification map. The next sequence that's obtained is an arterial phase study. So here's the arterial phase study. That's important to look through because it gives you an idea of where contrast is going. The purpose of an endograft is to cause all the blood to go through the endograft outside of the aneurysm sac and allow the aneurysm sac to be depressurized. So you can see here that there is unfortunately a blush of high attenuation contrast within the excluded part of the aneurysm. So if I really zoom in, uh, on this phase, what you're looking for is the excluded part of the aneurysm and to see if there's any high attenuation contrast material. Here we can verify that that is not, in fact, calcification because it does not appear on the non-contrast scan. So that's what an endoleak looked like. In this case, it was likely a type 2 endoleak. If you look at it, it's probably coming from a lumbar collateral artery. So there are these tiny lumbar collateral arteries which frequently feed into the aortic aneurysm sac. They're the most common cause of endoleak. Sendo leak likely arose posteriorly here, came around anteriorly, and was collecting uh, more inferiorly within the dependent uh, anterior portion of the excluded aneurysm. The last part of the endograft CTA is a 90 second delay. So I'm putting that on the left hand of the screen here. And we get this to look for more subtle endo leaks as well as to confirm endo leaks. So if there is an actual endoleak, it should follow the uh, luminal attenuation of the aorta. So you can see on the arterial phase on the right hand of the screen, it's brighter than on the more delayed phase on the left hand of the screen. It's because an endoleak essentially follows the same attenuation pattern as the intravascular lumen. Oftentimes between the arterial phase and the delayed phase, the size of the contrast accumulating within the excluded part of the aneurysm increases in size, and then you can lay your hat down that that is, in fact, an endoleak if there was any equivocation on the arterial phase study only. We'll notice that this uh, CT scan was done with dual energy, so you have some additional sequences. If you've never seen a dual energy scan, this has a couple things that are labeled. So the first is called 70 keV. This is just a standard CT scan reconstructed at what you would see, typically see for a um, single phase study. A 55 keV is at a slightly lower energy level. This really makes the iodine in the study pop out. So this turned out to be a really pretty wonderful CT scan. So it doesn't matter in this case, but occasionally you'll have very poor bolus timing in, for example, cardiac heart failure patients. In those cases, if the aorta is not very bright, i.e. opacified with uh, contrast, the lower attenuation uh, dual energy images really make the contrast pop out. So it's almost kind of like having a backup. And from this uh, iodine uh, heavy or iodine weighted image, the computer actually can make an iodine map. So this is a subtraction image where really the only things seen on this image should be things that are enhancing with contrast or bones. So again, if you have a little equivocal area that you're unsure maybe this is um, contrast or not, you can see how much this iodine map makes that endoleak pop out 
compared to the, just the thrombosed uh, part of the excluded aneurysm sac. The last thing you get with a dual energy scan is a virtual unenhanced image. So let's say this was protocoled incorrectly and for some reason the original non-contrast series was omitted. You can bring up this virtual non-contrast and you can see here that this small focal high attenuation area is a calcification because it was not subtracted away when the dual energy technique made the virtual un unenhanced image. Uh, it's not quite ready to totally replace a non-contrast scan, although it can be helpful, especially when a non-contrast scan was not done as part of the